This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat. More about them coming up shortly. Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to Japanese comfort food classics with a shot at, honestly, one of the weirder fried chicken dishes that I have come across in a while, which is the Japanese chicken nanban. For those unfamiliar, chicken nanban is a Japanese styled fried chicken coated in egg and AP flour, then tossed in a bright vinegar based nanban sauce, and finally topped with a QP based tartar sauce. And now, if you're wondering, as I was, that that seems like a lot of unusual things to throw together, then you would be right. We are once again venturing into the realm of Japanese cuisine that has been heavily influenced by foreign culture, which is honestly one of my favorite things to find in Asian. Cooking, as many of you all should probably know by now. I think for me, what stands out the most here, though, is the breading and batter itself. We're going to be tossing our chicken into the nanban sauce to create a wet but not glazed piece of chicken, which means that we're going for a more tender and soft piece of fried chicken rather than the crispy crunch that you might find in a chicken karage. Then finally, to pair with this, the element that I think really ties this whole dish together is our tartar sauce, which in my opinion, vastly benefits from the use of Japanese sweet and savory QP mayo rather than your plain old Hellman's. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, we're kicking things off here first with our nanban sauce, which as I mentioned before, is going to heavily focus on vinegars and acids to create its iconically bright and tangy qualities. Going into my mixing bowl here first, this is one inch or about one tablespoon of fine minced ginger to start, followed by four tablespoons or a quarter cup of soy sauce. Then up next, this is two tablespoons of Japanese rice wine or mirin, followed by a whopping four tablespoons or a quarter cup of rice vinegar. Yeah, this sauce is mostly just an assortment of vinegars. Finally, rounding this all out, this is two tablespoons of brown sugar mixed to combine for some malted sweetness. Then I'm setting this aside for a moment while we dive into our tartar sauce next. Alright, so for our tartar sauce, we're mainly focusing here on our creamy textures and qualities that come from our QP mayo and hard boiled egg to contrast against the acidity and brightness of our nanban sauce. So up first here, this is half of a medium white onion, small diced with the root end still attached. Then next, this is two pickle spears that I'm de-seeding and similarly small dicing as well. I have seen a few recipes call for a simple Persian cucumber here in lieu of the pickle. But I actually think that the brightness of the pickle brine is really important to cut through the creamy qualities of our mayo today. Over on the stove, I'm quickly hard boiling a single egg for about 8 minutes, starting at room temperature. Real quick now, I don't know if this company even still exists, and I've actually seen this product come up on lists of useless kitchen gadgets too, but I just want to quickly shout out Hammerhead products for these egg timers. I've been using this exact egg timer for 20 plus years now, and it's literally the only single use kitchen gadget item in my entire kitchen. These things are great. You just throw them in the pot with the egg at a cold start, then it changes color when the egg is done. There's no timers or interrupting ringing bells. Just look at the rock in your pot. I don't know. If anyone from Hammerhead Products is watching this, hit me up. Anyway, I digress. I'm small dicing this egg up and tossing it into my mixing bowl as well, then rounding this all out as promised with a single tablespoon of rice vinegar and what ended up being a half cup of QP mayo. Next up, rounding out our veggies, this is about a quarter head of cabbage that I'm slicing up here. You could also use a mandolin too if you wanted to save some time and, you know, you aren't scared shitless of them like I am. Finally, moving on to our chicken next, I'm whisking up a single egg here to start, then large dicing three medium chicken thighs. Now, I'll also mention that I've seen a pretty even split on whether chicken nanban should be either fried as a whole thigh or diced into popcorn chicken. Personally, I think the popcorn chicken is going to yield a better eating experience and a more even fry, but choose for yourselves accordingly. I'm tossing my chicken thigh here into my egg to coat first, then combining it with 2 thirds cup of AP flour, holding back as much liquid as possible. Remember, we're making a dry dredge here, not a wet batter. 
I'm mixing this all to combine, then we're heading over to the stove. Before we dive in though, I did want to take a quick sec to talk about today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat, because I'm honestly pretty stoked for this one, y'all. Tokyo Treat is a monthly Japanese snack box subscription where you can get up to 20 exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks. Now, for those who are not familiar, you might be thinking, but Wesley, I can get snacks anywhere though, so what? wrong, and I'll explain. Japan in general, but also Tokyo more specifically, is very well known for just the greatest and best array of snack options, maybe in the world? If you live here in the States and you've ever had a friend tell you that the 7-Eleven corner stores here suck, this is why. It's because the 7-Elevens in Japan are filled with just way better snacks than the ones that you can find here in the States. I'll be absolutely honest, I can't read Japanese very well and I don't know what most of these things are, but I can promise you that this bag of matcha flavored Kit Kat bars is almost certainly unlike any other Kit Kat bar that you've ever had here in the States. Or how about these grilled garlic chips? I mean, come on, seriously y'all. Imagine getting a box like this to snack on every single month. Follow the link in the description to learn more and tune in next week where I'll be deciphering all of these snacks and taste testing my favorites. You know, for science. This is a pretty weird job, y'all. Anyway, over on the stove, I've got a small saucepan over medium-low heat where I'm gently bringing my non bun sauce plus about a quarter cup of water to a simmer for about one to two minutes. We're not looking to reduce here, mostly just cooking off a little bit of that brightness and acidity. You'll notice though it is still very much quite loose and liquidy though. Next up, I'm heating my fryer up to 350 degrees F using my handy Thermopro thermometer. Then I'm frying my chicken 12 to 15 pieces at a time for about 5 minutes until golden brown. Remember, our dry dredge is comprised of 100% AP flour today, so it's going to be a little bit thicker and more dense due to the gluten in the AP flour. I'm tossing my chicken in my non bon sauce here to coat, then we're plating this up with a bit of rice to start, followed by a bed of our shredded cabbage topped with our fried chicken. Then here's my tartar sauce going on top, paired with a bit of furikake and sweet pickled daikon to finish, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so as far as popcorn chicken goes, I will say that it has been a while since I've made a fried chicken using purely 100% AP flour. There is a reason why we more typically cut AP flour with a lighter starch like cornstarch or potato starch in fried chicken recipes, and it's because AP flour is very dense and chewy thanks to its gluten content. So, more typically in our quest to create a crispier fried chicken, we add a thinner starch to help promote better crunch. A chicken naan bun, on the other hand, is deliberately intended to be a little bit more chewy, thanks in no small part to the naan bun sauce that has absorbed into the breading itself, which is very unique. Since the sauce hasn't been reduced the way a glaze is, it's stayed a pretty loose sauce base sort of like a light vinegar coating to a fish and chips. This contrasted against the creamy and savory qualities of our QP tartar sauce makes for the perfect bite of sweet, savory, chewy fried chicken that's something sort of reminiscent of a fish and chips but just with way, way more flavor and umami. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series that's dedicated to Japanese classic dishes, so definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice interneters, and I'll see you soon.